I'm Jonathan. I'm Ashley, and we are Tiny Shiny Home. We spent the last several weeks rebuilding our Shelter Logic garage in a box tents to withstand the high UV and 100 plus mile an hour winds that we get here in the high desert. by building wooden barn door facings, hyper adobe earth bag walls, adding metal roofing panels, and giving them their own mini solar powered systems for good measure. But first, a little backstory. Our family is building an off-grid desert homestead from the ground up here in Cochise County, Arizona. When we moved on to our raw land, we were coming off five years of full-time travel and only had what we could fit in our truck and renovated Airstream. But building property from scratch means your minimalism quickly goes out the window. Literally the day after we parked our trailer, we set up and installed a Shelter Logic garage in a box to house our tools, water tank, and what we knew would be a whole lot more stuff in the near future. At the time, this was the fastest and cheapest way to get a 12 by 20 structure up, and it was perfect for what we needed. But over time, the cracks in this product began to show, literally. While the metal frame that makes up the skeleton of the garage in a box is super heavy duty, the zippered fronts in the overhead canopy do not hold up well in the high desert of Arizona. If the zippers themselves weren't breaking and making it impossible to get into or seal up the front and back of the shelter logic, the main overhead cover itself was in constant state of repairs, tears, and leaks. You can only gorilla tape it so many times, guys. Trust us, we tried. These shelter logic tents are relatively inexpensive and easy enough to set up, so we even got a second one to act as a feed shed for our animals, and within less than a year, its cover began to deteriorate as well. During this time, we were storing our animal feed, our gear for our solar power system, and all of our tools in these structures. We always felt like we were a monsoon or windy day away from disaster. We finally reached our breaking point and had to decide if we were gonna trash these things or find a way to rebuild them to the rain, UV, wind, and weather events that are common here in the desert. The base model 12 by 20 by eight garage in a box only cost us $500 at the time. And a quick look around the internet told us that a pre-built shed or shipping container was going to run anywhere from 6,000 to 12,000 for something similarly sized. So we put our heads together and came up with a plan to rebuild what we already had. Like we mentioned, the frames of these were super solid. So our plan was to use the existing skeleton and replace all the vinyl. Three important things before we jump in. Number one, a huge thanks to EcoFlow for sponsoring this video. We're gonna use their portable power station as part of this project, and we'll cover that in a little bit. Number two, if you want more details, cost breakdowns, or links, make sure you check out the companion article on our site. And three, just in case you missed it, we are rebuilding two ShelterLogic garage in boxes, our garage and our feed shed. Both are pretty similar, but have a few key differences. All right, let's get started. Our first step was to rebuild the front panel with barn doors and wooden planks. Now, if you're wondering about the longevity of wood here in the desert, you're on the right track. Any untreated lumber that's exposed to the sun is gonna twist and warp and crack and just not last very long. Thankfully, we learned about an ancient Japanese technique called shishugiban that we've used successfully on a number of other projects. This process preserves and strengthens wood for a much longer time out here in the desert. Here's how it works. Step one, using a propane torch, char all sides of the board. Step two, take a stiff bristle brush and scrape off the char, pushing it into the pores of the wood. And step three, brush on boiled linseed oil and let it cure overnight. This process takes some time and it's super messy, but it does hold up to our high UV and low humidity here in the desert. With the shishugi bonding complete, it was time to start piecing together our new front. A major selling point for these Shelter Logic garage in a box tents was a nice wide opening for easy access to everything inside. So we needed a large secure door to get stuff in and out. While these barn doors aren't as big as the original openings, we think they're a good trade off between stability and durability compared to that roller vinyl. Let's see how we did it. Our Shelter Logic, let me try again. <laughs> All right, our Shelter Logic garage in a box needs a makeover. 
You may remember that we actually put a whole new facing on our feed shed months ago. Yes. Now it's time for the garage to get its face. Yes, and this is part of a multi-day project because the back of the garage has ripped open. And so we're going to have to deal with the back walls on both of these garage and boxes at the same time. But first, we're doing the front. Yeah, so it's going to be the same layout as the feed shed. We'll be installing vertical posts with a header and then framing in the rest of the front with one by sixes. Mm -hmm. And building our own doors, barn yeah. doors, and it worked really well last time. We really like how it turned out. So we're going to do that on the front today, but we only have one day to get the front done mm. because we have a big thunderstorm coming in tomorrow and we can't just have the front open and rain pouring in the whole time. We are going to get started. <laughs> this is a multi-day project. I'm not sure how long it's going to take, but mm -mm. we got to start somewhere. Chop, chop. The rains are coming. All right. Yeah, Just glasses. Get glasses. glasses. Ready when you are, Captain. <laughs> Keep going. What is this toothbrush made out of? Oh my gosh. <laughs> the bristles. Oh, geez. It's just gonna keep going. It's just gonna pop up. Whoa. You gotta eat all your mic. You're just like, you're not. Oh, wow. Oh, geez. Maybe you're not strong enough. Maybe the toothbrush is stronger than you. <laughs> okay, do the first test again. Now the most annoying part. We somehow have to drill through the wood, directly through the pipe behind it, and then bolt it together. And it's really hard to get it to match up. They're very strong. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We have a metal bit, but it's still, it's hard. It's real hard, babe. It's real hard, babe. I almost need like ah. a metal tap. Ah. 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 Metal. Thank you. 
That was way easier than that. Mm. Can I help you? Huh? You're in my way. It's only noon and we're almost done. We're not almost done. We're getting really close to being almost Close. No, we're not. All right, the frame is in place. So now we're gonna actually build the door in place. So we're gonna put these in, attach the pieces to the back, and then just cut the thing right down the middle. And then it'll just swing and be perfect. No pinching. No pinching. Putting this door together with all the planks going vertically while your 2x6 is still intact and then cutting it will allow the door to like not pinch when you cut it.
guys, we're so close. We've got everything put on, all the wood, but we got to put the hardware on. Very exciting. Fix that garage in a box. logic garage in a box. <laughs> Can we do that again? All right, we're on day two of fixing this shelter logic, and today we begin the back wall. Yeah, so we toyed around with the idea of doing the same thing we did on the fronts with all the lumber and the doors, but it's real expensive. Yeah, I mean, we we looked into it and there's a lot of hardware you have to buy to build those doors in addition to the wood first we we talked about a plywood wall on mm -hmm. the back right and then we're like why don't we just throw earth bags up there yeah and so we're gonna try it yeah this is all an experiment yeah i think it'll be fine now i think it'll be fine too yeah so there's a few things we had to think about and we decided that we're actually going to put the bags so the you know the pole goes like this uh -huh. and instead of setting the bags on the outside or the inside of that pole we're actually going to set it right in the middle mm -hmm. so that when we tamp it those bags should sort of form around the poles and it should just like lock itself in all together here's hoping theoretically that's the plan that's the idea yeah so our and something we decided too is we don't need a, a door back here so that's another reason we're just building a solid wall we've been without a door for a long time so yeah we, we can get by just fine. One thing we are going to do is build in an opening for venting though, because these things are gonna get stupid hot in the summer yeah. and we wanna make sure we've got a way to get some air flowing through them. So we'll tackle that later, but just know we're, we're gonna build an opening into these when we get up higher. That rooster is real happy. Everything's fine, we know. Okay, so we're just getting started on laying bags. Uh, the only thing that we need to keep in mind is keeping it as plumb as possible mm -hmm. and making sure that, that it's centered with the holes. Sure, that should be pretty easy. Yeah. Um, our friends Jason and Selena came by, they dug out our pit. I know you guys will be so excited. They leveled out that pit with his tractor. Yeah. Brought us a huge pile of dirt over here um, so that we can just mix it and make up the bags right here. Yeah. We have a brand new cement mixer because both of ours broke. Uh, we've moved the water down here, we moved everything down here to the earth bags, so I think we're ready to go. 99's ready, look at that. 99 <laughs> is loving the dirt pile. Alright, let's get started, babe.
This morning, when you said we can totally get that wall done in a day, do yeah, you remember that? I remember that. I do think we could have got it done had we started in the morning. This is not bad for our first day of wall work. Yeah, we're nearly halfway up. Also, I think it's probably good that we're taking a break and letting this dry. Yeah, before we keep going up because. We've never done this small of a project where we just can keep going. Right. Usually you're supposed to let it dry before you add the next layer. At least the next one, not the next, like, six. So yeah. <laughs> in this case, it's good if we let this dry before we continue. We're trying a few different things with this. We're not adding cement to this mix at all. Yeah. It's just our soil, which does have clay in it, so the compression is really good. We're also adding gravel on the top of each bag in between the layers. Gravels and, gravel and rocks and like whatever. Yeah, yeah. so I've seen this done a few times um, where they line like larger rocks up the center of a hyper adobe bag and then lay your next bag. And the idea is just to keep the bags from shifting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this it's is, almost like the barbed wire yeah. in Super Adobe. It gives it yeah. something else to grip to. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if it's gonna make any difference, but I figured let's try it. We have this gravel right here. Cali, we'll be back at this tomorrow morning working on getting this wall, hopefully, all the way up. Yeah, it's gonna get a little tricky at the top. We do need to double check our measurements for the vent fan that we want to buy and install here so that we can make a frame for it and mm -hmm. insert it at the top. All right, we'll be back tomorrow. Today, before we get started on more of this back wall, we have to address this mess. So our garage, we're in between projects and everything just gets thrown in here all the time. Not ideal. We don't have a great um, storage solution for tools right now. So everything kind of gets piled on this table. Well, this table is actually moving to the back wall. So we have to take everything out of here off the table, and this table weighs probably like 600 pounds. It is so heavy. It takes many people to move it, but we need to be able to move this table to the back. So that just involves moving all the other crap. So that's our job this morning. This is super insane to me that this isn't even all that's in the garage. There's so much crap. garage all cleaned up with the tables moved things aren't quite organized but they're as good as they can be because I don't have a toolbox so when I was going through stuff I found that we have a spare window that we were gonna use in chicken garden but we didn't so I was standing here at the table looking at this view look at this <coughs> mm. focus on the mountains behind <laughs> Don't look at all the trash, but the mountain view is really nice. Bring the wall up till we cover all the trash. It's not trash, it's supplies. So we're going to use the window and make a little opening here that will use less bags here on the wall. And also I've already made our um, opening for our vent fan that we will install at the top. So I think we're just ready to start laying bags for today, right? Well, you got to build a window frame. 
Well, yeah, I've already got the wood cut. I just need to screw it together. Okay. So and you we, guys could start laying bags. We got to build cleats though. I got when, it. Are, when? How high is the window going? Um, still, we don't need to lay like two more bags. Okay. Ready? We will start laying bags. Guys, we need the scaffolding. Will you obtain it with me? We just have to jump in here real quick. That was the earth bag wall for the garage, and we basically did the same thing on the feed shed, but we didn't really record any of it. We were a little busy, guys. <laughs> the only real difference between the two is that we decided to build the intake vents into the feed shed wall with two four inch PVC pipes. So essentially the garage would be pulling air from the front of the building out the back, and the feed shed would be pulling air from the back of the building to the front. We'll see if one performs better than the other. Man, this has been like a multi-week project. Yes, but guys, <laughs> our roofing materials are here. Yes. 
so it's time to cut the tarp off everywhere. Because, you know, I mean, obviously most of it's gone because yeah. we had a serious... We had a day with like 50 mile an hour winds. It was just constant. Yeah. And it literally ripped the whole cover off. Yeah. So thankfully, I mean, we were kind of planning it. We knew this was going to happen. Mm -hmm. This is why we're rebuilding them. But it was poor timing to have this completely uncovered for like a week. But we were forward thinking enough that we had already ordered the panels before That's true. it happened. So. Yeah. So they showed up yeah. yesterday. So we are putting these on as quickly as possible. I'm curious how well this goes. Our plan is really just to keep this very simple. We're not using any beetle tape between layers. We're not like, it's just metal screws into the metal poles to hold these panels on. And stitch screws. And stitch screws to hold the metal panels together. Yeah. Um, as far as how it's gonna, you know, work out where they they hit on each other, and if and if we need to cut one or if we can just overlap, that's the big question um, that we'll find out once we start doing this, I guess. So I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm. Yeah, I would love to get this covered up. Okay. Very excited. Let's go. With these garage in a box tents, they come with augers to secure them down to the ground, anchor them in place. We put extra augers because our winds are so bad. However, nearly all these augers are gonna have to be moved so that we can put the panels straight down because over time, the tent has shifted and the augers are now kind of far on the outside. So yeah, somebody's not happy about that. Putting new augers in, won't take a while. So we are gonna simplify a little bit because we cemented those four by sixes on the front. So the front is secure and then on the back, we laid probably a couple of thousand pounds of earth bags over the pipes that wrap under. So we're not gonna worry about the augers on the corners anymore. So we had eight total. So now we're just gonna focus on four. So we're gonna space two in the middle of the frame on this side and two in the middle frame on that side. Hopefully that'll be fine. Augers are moved, everything's out of the way, we're ready to put panels on, but we need some help.
Cause I really want you in my space Picking up every call I'm falling all my money's on you I never knew I needed love Needed love, needed love I always thought I'd be enough Be enough, be enough You show me what it means to see Outside of me God knows what I'd be missing Now I really need your love Need your love We have a few boards that we need to trim because they're sticking out further than these posts, poles, whatever. Um, so just kind of trim those off and get the next panel up. This has been such a long project. So long. Uh, I can't even tell you how many weeks it's been since we started trying to rebuild this garage. Yeah, but today is kind of like the, well, well, not the last piece, but an important piece to get this finished up. We're going to start putting the metal roofing panels over top. Yep, which means we got to cut off and take down that old vinyl that keeps giving us trouble. Yeah. So first, and sorry, go ahead. We might even have to move augers, which is your least favorite yeah, thing. Yeah, I'm not looking forward to that. Uh, but this is the last metal roof. Like, for a while. Hopefully for a while. I'm tired of thinking about these things. Mm -hmm. I want to be finished with it. Mm -hmm. So let's rip off this stupid vinyl cover and put on this beautiful metal roof. broke a bit. It wasn't me. Let's see if we can get it out. That wasn't that hard. <laughs>
next phase in fixing our shelter logic tents is that we're going to add some mini power systems to these, but that starts with a solar panel. Now, as you may have noticed, this is not a flat roof and solar, plan solar panels and solar panels are generally flat. Thankfully, we've had some experience with this on our renovated Airstream, which also has a curved roof. We had to figure out a way to mount the panels so that the feet would still touch on a spot that isn't flat. So there's these really cool mounts. I'll show you here in a minute. We're gonna use these mounts to uh, adjust the feet to stick to it. A little bit of measuring is involved. We've already done this on the garage, so we kind of have a good idea of what we need to do. So anyway, the first step is we're gonna put these mounts on and then we're gonna get it up there and get it mounted into place. Okay, so there's a few pieces to these mounts. So you attach this part to uh, the frame of your solar panel, you screw it in or bolt it in through the bottom, and then you attach a foot to the side of it. And the way you do that is there's a, a knob. Sorry, I got a lot of pieces here. <laughs> so. so, like this, put it in place, and then that way that leg or the foot, whatever you want to call it, is movable so that if you have a, a pitched roof or a rounded roof, then you can adjust it before you tighten it down. Now, what's crazy is these only come with VHB tape on the bottom, and that's all that we used on the Airstream, and they've been up there. We've taken the Airstream 100,000 miles down all sorts of uh, interstates, crazy winds, and they haven't ever come off. So the VHB tape does work, but because of the way our panels are shaped on um, on this feed shed, there's these little extra ribs and so we can't get a full flat connection. So we are gonna go ahead and screw in through these and we'll get to that in a minute. But anyway, so I've got to mount this in the right spot. We've already done those measurements um, on the frame of the solar panel and then we'll put it all together and take it over there and install it. Love it how you love the electric like you do. Okay, it's time to mount that solar panel to these metal roofing panels that we've already installed. Now there's a few things to think about here. Number one, this is a large solar panel. Uh, it weighs about 40 pounds. It's a good size. This is not heavy gauge metal. So what we want to do is we want to hit a rib where we can. And because all of our winds usually blow from the southwest, which is this direction, we're going to try to hit the rib on the front of the panel and not worry about the back of the panel. So we're gonna start here and go back. And then on the, the two back legs, we'll put some wood on the other side of the metal paneling to suck it down and to hold it tight. Between the VHB tape and us drilling uh, sheet metal screws into the ribs and then into that wood, those wood blocks, it shouldn't go anywhere. Fingers crossed. It's very awkward. It's at the top of the curve. We need like three ladders and scaffolding and like four people. So let's see what we can do. With both solar panels securely installed, it was time to tackle the power systems for both buildings. 
and they couldn't be more different. Let's talk about the feed shed first. Our power goals were pretty simple. We just needed a vent fan to help circulate air and lights for when we're milking goats early or late in the day. We decided to go with a 12 volt system for the feed shed, getting USB lights and a DC based vent fan that we installed on the front of the building. We also wanted to use this as an opportunity to test out connecting an additional power system to our Victron VRM portal. This was tricky because this building wasn't close enough to a steady Wi-Fi signal to get it to connect to the internet. After a bunch of research, we settled on the Global Link 520, a cell-based VRM device that lets you connect your shunt and your charge controller and sync all that data to the cloud. Now, I'll be honest, this power system is a little overkill for what we need to do, but it's more of a proof of concept for our Earthbag Chicken Garden project. We're building a hyper adobe earthbag chicken garden and recording our process every day. Check out the playlist here. We'll do a more detailed breakdown of this setup in a later article and video, but for now, here are the basics of this power system. The solar panel runs through a double pull circuit breaker and into a Victron charge controller. Out of that positive wire, it runs through a 25 amp mini a &L fuse to the positive post of the battery. We chose a simple deep cycle 12 volt battery because of the temperature extremes in these buildings. From the positive post of the battery, we run through a 25 amp circuit breaker to the fuse block where we'll connect our loads. The negative wire runs directly to the system minus side of the Victron smart shunt, which then goes from the battery minus side of the shunt to the negative post of the battery. The smart shunt also has a VBAT plus wire that connects to the positive post of the battery. The Global Link 520 is hardwired to the positive and negative posts of the battery and connected to both the charge controller and shunt via VE direct cables. Finally, the positive side of the loads are run to the fuse block and the negative side to the system minus side of the shunt. We chose the AC Infinity Air Titan T8 vent because it was the perfect size to fit over our barn doors, use DC motors so all I had to do was chop off the AC power brick and wire it directly to the 12 volt system, and it had a temperature and humidity sensor with programmable alarms and settings to tell the fan to come on exactly when we wanted to. We found these super simple string lights that run very low power, have shatterproof bulbs, and connect using a USB connection. So we needed a 12 volt USB outlet, and the model we found even has a switch for the whole thing. With the Global Link 520 connected to our VRM via its cell connection, now we see multiple power installs in our VRM and can monitor this system from anywhere in the world. This is all very cool, but if you don't care about the Victron thing and you don't want it to connect to the internet, you can piece out all those components for much cheaper ones and save yourself a bunch of money. We approached the power in the garage very differently. The vent fan that we chose was higher power and AC based, plus it's a garage. 120 volt power is kind of a no-brainer. We wanted to charge our power tool batteries, have some lights, and be able to run any other tool that we needed. This got more complicated because now we had to use an inverter. And this is where I get to talk about our sponsor, EcoFlow. They sent us a Delta Max 1600 portable power station to review. An all-in-one unit that does DC power, AC power, and can be charged via solar panels was a perfect fit for our use case. Here's a few other cool features of the Delta Max. EcoFlow power stations charge at 1600 watts when plugged into AC power. And you can combine up to 800 watts of additional solar input to charge it even faster. Even though the Delta Max 1600 acts as a 2000 watt generator, it can actually run 2800 watt appliances thanks to XBoost. It can even surge up to 5000 watts. Let's see your gas generator do that. With six 20 amp outlets, you can power all the things. The EcoFlow app lets you monitor charge levels, usage data, and adjust deep level settings via your smartphone. Our unit shipped with about 1.6 kilowatt hours of lithium battery storage, and you can expand with optional battery banks up to six kilowatt hours. The plug and play nature of this makes it easy to install a small lithium battery bank and inverter based system quickly. The unit is totally portable. It only weighs about 50 pounds or the same as a small gas generator. You can even use the Delta as an emergency backup power. With this high surge capacity, you can still run many appliances in your house worry free. Now, let's look specifically at how we set it up in our garage. Just like the feed shed, we use the same 240 watt solar panel mounted to the roof, wires run through the wall to connect to the EcoFlow. Now, obviously the solar charges a lot slower than a direct AC connection, but the goal was that the solar panel would provide enough wattage to run the vent and intermittent power tools and keep the battery charged up most of the time. So far, so good on that front. 
Next, we use EcoFlow's special solar adapter, which has an XT60 on one end and two MC4 connections on the other end. I appreciate that they stuck with the standard solar connection, so I was able to wire this together myself. On the AC side, we got a laughably long power strip at Harbor Freight, mounted it to our work desk, and plugged it in. This gave us easy access to power everything else without having to reach around to the back to find the plug each time. We connected our AC Infinity Airlift T10, a higher powered AC version of the vent fan we installed on the feed shed, ran its cables and sensor, and mounted the separate display so we could program it to come on when we wanted. Then we plugged in our DeWalt battery charger so we would have a single place to charge batteries. Finally, we hung the same USB lights we used in the feed shed, but plugged them directly into the DC panel on the front of the EcoFlow. If we want to turn them on or off, we just use the DC button. The only thing I really needed to do out of the box to make this work was to open the EcoFlow app and set the AC power to not shut itself off automatically overnight. Otherwise, it's been chugging along, running the vent fan, and charging our tools like a champ. Since the Delta Max is still portable, we'll be doing a full in-depth review later this year, using it on all sorts of other projects here on the homestead. But for now, we're really loving having high wattage AC power in our garage that's generated by the sun. Okay, we made it to the final step. We went back to those earth bag walls and began to cover the scratch coat with a plaster coat. For this final coat of plaster, we're going with an eight to one ratio. Eight parts of our sifted native soil sifted through a window screen, so it's super fine. And one part Portland cement. Instead of applying by hand, we used the trowel to really compress and smooth the final layer and then came back across with a wet sponge moving in circular motions to bring a bit of the sand back to the surface and add a subtle texture. We made sure to mist these walls down a few times the next day and went back with a sponge again to patch any hairline cracks that showed up. Applying the final coat of plaster this way was a great test for our much bigger earth bag project that we're working on, which is our Hyper Adobe earth bag chicken garden. So much to plaster on that one. So big. But this was a good test, like you said. Yeah. What a ride this has been, friends. Oh my goodness. Our Shelter Logic Garage in a Boxes got a high desert makeover. So let's do a quick recap. We added front facing barn doors and Shishugiban wooden planks to provide a beautiful finished look. The doors can be locked, held closed with fasteners from both sides, or held open with ground poles. The vent fans help circulate the air so it doesn't get trapped and heat up to dangerous temperatures. Earth bag walls saved us money on material costs. Windows and bottle bricks provide beautiful light and views in the morning. The metal roofing panels are securely mounted to the frame, keep the water out, and make it a truly finished building. The lights are super handy for working on projects at night or early morning animal feedings. The feed shed 12 volt system is running well and connected to our VRM so we can see the stats anytime. The EcoFlow Delta Max power station gives us true AC power for our tools and projects while being charged back up by solar. The garage and the feed shed are super solid now so we don't have to worry about them blowing away or leaking. Thank goodness. So tired of them blowing away and leaking. It was a constant pain to think about like, is this the day that it's going to blow away? <laughs> is this the day that all our stuff is going to get ruined? Yeah. Yeah. No more. Mm -hmm. 
And because we know that you're going to ask, how much did this cost? We're actually going to tell you how much this cost. Yeah. Yes. We kept track of all the expenses. And we were constantly questioning ourselves whether rebuilding these was worth the money or we should have just, you know, started over and gone and built something else. But we thought we could do it cheaper. So let's see if we were right. We're going to focus on one building at a time. So let's start with the feed shed. Only the materials, right? Mm -hmm. So the Shelter Logic Garage and Box itself only cost $500, like we said. But that may not be true anymore. If you're watching this at a later date, it could be more expensive, but it should be within a couple of hundred dollars of that amount. For the front facing planks and doors, here's what we needed. Two four by six by eights for $50. Three two by six by eights for $40. Four two by four by eights for $32 and 20 one by six by eights for $235. And as always, your pricing may vary. We also needed a set of 12 inch cane bolts and that was $20. A swivel eye has splash was $9. I said it weird. Eye has splash. A, swi <laughs> a, sw a swivel eye has splash was $9. It's a little thing that folds over and you turn. Yeah. Two handles, $15. And we use 16 inch hyper adobe bags that we already had and that was equivalent to about twenty dollars worth of bags twenty dollars guys for the back wall yeah it's pretty cheap for the feed shed we used four inch pipes and caps that was only like 10 bucks but then we get to the most expensive part of the rebuild which was the metal roofing panels mm. yeah yeah we needed eight metal roofing panels they come in about three foot sections and we decided to get 23 foot long panels so that it would hang over the front and the back that cost us $929. Ouch. Ouch. Uh, we needed screws to go with that. Metal to metal, one inch screws were $60, and then three quarter inch stitch screws were $12. We also added a two by three vinyl window, and that was $75. For a total of $2,006. And if you think about it, you cannot buy a building that size for $2,000. No way. So we are really happy that we went ahead and rebuild what we already had instead of like getting a shipping container and having to outfit that with yeah. vents and lights and windows and all the things that we would need. Yeah. Now that's not the whole story though, because we did add power systems. That's true. So the power systems cost a little extra. So let's look at those. Okay. The feed shed power. Remember, this was the 12 volt based system with all the fancy Victron stuff. So it's going to be a little more expensive than it probably needs to be. But again, this was a test case scenario and we wanted it to connect to our VRM. So the 240 watt solar panel only cost $45, thanks Santan Solar. However, the rocker mount feet were $80, which if you've watched our big solar install video with our ground mount, you know that we like to spend a lot more money on our mounts than our actual panels. I don't know that we like to spend a lot more money. It seems to be a theme happens. for us, yes. <laughs> We needed 20 feet of the positive and negative solar wires. That's 40 feet total for about $40. 15 feet of 10 gauge red and black wire was only $30. 15 feet of 18 gauge red and black wire was $27. And two VE direct cables were $34. Our 100 amp hour deep cycle lead acid battery, we just went to Walmart, it was like 120 bucks. The two pole circuit breaker was 16. The Victron charge controller was 119. The smart shunt was 130 and the global link 520 was 230. This is getting expensive, babe. I know. The mini AL fuse holder was $13. Oh my gosh. And the mini AL fuse was $5. Oh my gosh. Breaking the bank. Our DC circuit breaker was $46. The fuse block was $25. The vent fan was $120. Mm -hmm. Our USB lights were $24. And our 12 volt socket and switch was 12 whole dollars. The grand total for the solar in the feed shed is, where is it? I thought you were gonna say it. I thought you were gonna say it. I thought you were gonna well, say it. Well, after all that, you gotta say no, it. No, you gotta say no. it. You just do it again. The grand total for the feed shed power is $1,121. So if you combine those two together, $2,006 plus $1,121 is $3,120. Seven dollars for the whole feed shed, including the power system. Yeah. Now, the garage materials are basically the same cost. We didn't use the four inch PVC pipe, but we used rectangular soffit vents. Same, same price, essentially. So again, the materials 
for the garage were $2,006. Now the power system is completely different because of that EcoFlow and the AC power. However, what didn't change is that we spent $45 on solar panels and $80 on mounts for them. We also needed the solar wire, so another 20 feet of solar wire, positive and negative for $40. The EcoFlow Delta Max 1600 runs $1,700. And we did need an additional solar cable that goes from that XT60 to the MC4. And so we got that for $25. That AC powered vent fan was a little more expensive. It was $159. We bought our power strip for $20 and those USB lights again for $24. So that's a grand total of $2,093. So if you add both of those together, $2,006 for the materials, $2,093 for the power system, it's $4,099, which is still way less than a pre-built shed or a shipping container. So I feel like we still came out on top. Yeah, it just involved a little more elbow grease, which we're not afraid of. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm pretty happy with how all the pricing turned out. I'm just happy that we don't have to think about it anymore. All of our stuff is secure and it's not going to blow away. Yes. I wanted to jump in at the end of the cost breakdown because I actually forgot a couple of things. Sorry. <laughs> the first is the steel screw hook, which is this big screw that goes uh, into the wood. Then you've got your hinge strap. Then you've got the bolts and nuts that hold that on. So for each set of doors, you're gonna need four of the screws, four of the hinge straps, and then 12 of the nuts and bolts. That's gonna add about 50 or $60 to the total cost of the materials. Just so wanna make sure you know. If you watch to the end of this video, <laughs> can you believe you made it? Can you believe we made it this far? That was a long project. Yeah. Maybe one day we'll have wads of cash laying around and we can go buy a pre-built shed or shipping container. But for now, we're happy to roll up our sleeves and try to figure out more inventive ways of solving our problems. If you've enjoyed this project, you may want to see a few other full builds that we've done here on the homestead. Our Hyper Adobe Solar Shed office, our DIY off-grid solar system, and our earth bag chicken garden. We're just getting started out here and there's lots more to come. We hope to see you soon.